Round three of the Tata Steel Chess Tournaments took place today in Vikanse, and what a round it was. I could take you through all seven of the games played in the top group today. They were all packed with incident. Um, let's start off with the game between Radoslav Wojtaszek from Poland and the world champion Magnus Carlsen. Wojtaszek was also in Sochi uh, at the World Championship match as a second for Anand. So could he gain revenge today? We join the game after 28 moves. Wojtaszek with the white pieces and he's a pawn up. Carlsen has sacrificed a pawn but he has some compensation. This pawn on h3 kind of nestling nice and close to white's king potentially setting up some mating nets there and you know I really like the, the knight's position here uh, guarding these pawns. Um, yeah, Carlsen has compensation but now he played a very strange move. Um, he could for example take here maybe drop the bishop back to hit this pawn and well uh, you know white is probably better here but it, this is not a simple position at all. He played queen e6. Now, it's not clear to me whether he intended this as a sacrifice or not. Um, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe, perhaps he saw Wojtaszek running short of time and thought, right, here's my moment, let's complicate the game. Because after queen e6, white simply wins a piece with g4, trapping the bishop. But it's not so clear. Because after this exchange and e3, you can see that black is breaking through to white's king. So this is tricky. Let's see how things develop. So Wojtaszek took his extra piece. Of course, the pawn attacks the queen, so there's no time to take the knight here. And Wojtaszek defended well. Knights complement the king, and they're, they're excellent defenders when they're, they're stood next to the king. So this looks a little bit scary. The knight comes in to check, and if the king comes backwards, then a check on the g-file looks very nasty. So the king had to go in the middle. Now, maybe this is what Carlson saw and thought, well, I have chances here. Queen f6, with the idea of coming here. So Wojtaszek gives up this pawn on a4. Looks scary, because now the rook joins in the attack. But rook b1. White's rook covers along the first rank. And actually, white is solid enough here. After this, actually, black can't make any more progress in the position. Carlson played king f7, and queen f3, there's a, a good move. Obviously, attacking the pawn on f5. Carlson stepped to the side, and now a beautiful move from Wojtaszek that basically snuffs out any counterplay. He played queen to f4. Great move. Now if the queen retreats then knight f5 check and it's all over and queen takes queen. This is what happened in the game. The knight check wins back the queen. Nice little tactic and white is simply a piece up for nothing in this same game and Wojtaszek duly did the biz and wrapped the game up and won. So a shocker. Magnus Carlsen has only scored two draws so far and uh, stands on one out of three. Now let's move on. Wesley So against Levon Aronian. Well, what an interesting opening this was. Wesley So played a Scotch and Aronian played a new idea and now we've got this really messy position. So starting to advance his pawns on the king side. Aronian going through the middle of the board. It's like a game of chicken. Who's going to back down first? And here Aronian played knight to d... Uh, no he didn't play knight d7 in fact. He played knight g8. I'll look at knight d7 in a second. He played knight g8, and this is a terrible mistake. Bishop h5 came. g6. Now, if 
bishop takes g6, you can see because of this pin, then black wins. But instead, so played f takes g6. And if h takes g6, then the boot is on the other foot. The diagonal opens up, and that's decisive. So after f takes g6, Aronian took the queen. But now pawn takes queen check. So took the knight. And in this same game, he's simply a piece up. Piece up for nothing. Aronian struggled valiantly, but so wrapped up the game. So, big shock. Last year's winner loses to Wesley So. And with that victory, Wesley So is now number one in the USA on the live rating. So, there you go, Hikaru. You better, you better try and catch up. You've got some competition now. Of course, Wesley So uh, is from the Philippines. Uh, but he switched his federation, now representing the United States. So, we move on to the next game. Ding Liren against Badur Jobava from Georgia. Well, Badur is, is a very exciting player. He plays very unorthodox openings. And, well, in many games he manages to completely bamboozle his opponents. But today... His position really does look dubious out of the opening. His problem here is that he lacks space. Ding has a huge space advantage. And that means that wherever Black's king goes, whether it's to the king side or the queen side, it's going to be relatively easy for white to start an attack. So, for example, I mean, maybe this is relatively the best continuation to castle on the king side. Um, but I do not relish Black's prospects in this position. Um, I mean, White can even still play on the queen side, but you know, maybe a simple move like Bishop H6, and it, it, it looks really bad. Jabava castled on the queen side, and this is suicidal. Rook B1, threatening B4, just breaking open an open file. If Jabava tries to keep the position closed like this, in fact. I think white can simply sacrifice a piece here. And, you know, these pieces on the queen on the king side are completely irrelevant. In the meantime, white is just going to power down the B file. Let's try and straighten that. Yeah. Um, in the game, E6 happened. B4, there we go. It's so simple. You just need to open a file and it's going to be all over. And now in this position, a nice move, but a very simple move actually. e5, opening up the diagonal for the bishop. And b7 is caving in. And the game finished like this. Rook takes b7. Ding exchanged on e5 and played the queen to a1. And this just prepares the queen to go to the b2 square. And in this position, Jabava resigned. Let's just see exactly why. If rook takes knight, then rook f7 threatens something here. Queen b7. So rook b3, and now check. And queen e5. And that is total destruction. I'm afraid uh, Jabava is coming unstuck against stronger players with his... Uh, Slightly dubious openings, very dubious in this case. So Ivanchuk against Fanvedi, Vasily Ivanchuk. Well, what a what a brilliant player he is. We've seen him play some extraordinary chess over the years, and he's clearly up for a fight in this tournament. Well, he's playing Luke Fanvedi, who uh, and Luke has played his favourite Shaveningen and Sicilian, and. Ivanchuk is on the attack. He's just played g4. So this is a very typical Sicilian position where black has to decide, do I push or do I just kind of hold white's pawns for a bit with h6? Fanveli spotted an interesting idea. b4. So the knight comes to the side. Now, this looks pretty bad for black with the knight coming into b6, or possibly even a bishop as well, and this diagonal opening. 
But Van Veli has spotted a tactical idea, and here we see it. e5 opens up the bishop's diagonal, so bishop takes pawn threatened. And if white were to play, say, f5, closing the diagonal, then knight d4. This is Van Veli's idea. So you can see after this knight is exchanged off, the bishop threatens the knight and well I mean white can complicate this position but probably black is doing all right here particularly as white is tied to defending the c2 pawn but Ivanchuk had it under control he'd planned this he played g5 allowing bishop g4 and here incredibly he simply gave up the rook on d1. Van Veli took it, and now he didn't take on f6, he simply played bishop takes a6. So for a moment, Ivanchuk is a whole rook down, but rook takes bishop threatened, pawn takes knight threatened, bishop takes rook threatened. Now, as Tal once said memorably, you can only take one piece at a time when he had a whole uh, yeah, stack of pieces on prees. But still, uh, Ivanchuk is getting some material back. Knight d7. All right. Now you could play bishop takes rook, but this is even stronger. So now if we check out the material situation, Ivanchuk is the exchange down, but he has a pawn for it. And what a bishop this is. Black's king is in terrible trouble in the middle of the board. It really has to evacuate. But white dominates this position. Without a light square bishop to challenge the bishop on b5, this is just a terrible position. And the game went like this. Queen b7, so Van Veli attacking this one. Well, he's still hopeful c4 excellent move Ivanchuk has no qualms about advancing a pawn in front of his king if this is taken en passant then well the, the things are getting even worse as a knight is probably going to arrive on d5 van veli castled uh, well he would have seen that this is really disgusting but he just simply couldn't do much about it um, the bishop has to retreat, and now rook takes d6. I find it very interesting the way Ivanchuk played this. So the knight threatened goes back. Of course, he can take on g7 at any moment and gain a very strong attack against black's king. But that would give black a tiny bit of freedom. Then his bishop will, would be able to work. But instead of that, he simply kept this pawn on, on f6. Now there's a threat to play here. Okay, Van Veli closed down that possibility. But you can see that Ivanchuk has basically, with these last moves, made sure that he has this incredible pawn chain that just blunts out this bishop on d8. And I mean, what a picture! Uh, Van Veli can barely move any of his pieces here. It's it's a horrible position. Total domination by Ivanchuk. Van Veli played bishop c7, allowing white to take here. So now we have the unusual material situation of three minor pieces against two rooks. In fact, it's completely winning for white because Ivanchuk still totally dominates the centre. And, well, the game went on for another eight moves or so, um, Ivanchuk picked up this pawn and, well, it didn't get better for Van Veli. I mean, this was a, just a classic performance by Ivanchuk. And, well, after three rounds, in fact, Ivanchuk is joint leader with two and a half points. Caruana drew today against Giri. They had a very long game, a 100-move game. Caruana hung on to draw. So Caruana and Ivanchuk with two and a half points. And on two points, Wesley So, Radoslav Wojtasek, 
Maxime vachier lecrave and Ding Liren and uh, Carlson on one out of three. Thanks for watching.